today, you know, the, the topic and, you know, we put the title out there, Danger Will Robinson, which I'm aging myself, you know, but uh, <laughs> um, ignoring non-managing family shareholders can undermine your business. And um, that's really interesting. It's not something that we've talked about to this point. And because, you know, not every family business has ownership outside of those working in the business. So that, that a lot of times the family says, you know, if you're going to, you know, be an owner, then you have to work inside of here. But what uh, oftentimes happens and tells, you know, help me, you know, help our listeners um, is that when a business gets so big, you know, there's oftentimes the, you know, the, the founding generation or whoever the controlling generation, when they pass that on, the, you know, in order to do estate planning, properly and to do keep things fair, they end up passing ownership to people who aren't working in the business. And um, that has its, you know, pros and cons. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, right? Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about this, I guess, you know, before we dive into some questions, is there any, you know, um, do you want to lay the groundwork a little bit? Do you want to just give a little, you know, background on why, why this topic came up for you? What was percolating when this, you know, when we were talking about this topic? Well, I, I, I think it's probably our psychology backgrounds, right? You know, we're, yeah. we're interested in the dynamics in families and, um, you know, and I, and I think for me, um, uh, to, to see, um, incredibly well-intentioned um, family members, both within the business as well as shareholders, um, uh, struggle to understand how to um, uh, communicate with each other about the business. Um, you know, if it, you'll, if if you ask any. Um, uh, anyone who values family businesses, perhaps helping them get ready for a sale or, you know, helping them, you know, strategically, they will tell you that paying attention to the share shareholders that may at some point have to vote on an action to sell the business or to, you know, buy a new company and so forth, that, that often that is um, those voices are neglected because they're not in the day-to-day -day business, but at those critical junctures, it becomes incredibly important. Um, and so, um, you know, I think that's what has um, interested us is, um, and then we're both interested in, um, in governance work, helping families, you know, develop structures and communication processes. And so really underneath that is to understand um, the challenges of communicating when you're just partially in the business, i.e. through ownership. Gotcha. Yeah, I would, I, I agree a hundred percent with what you just said, Pat. And I would just add, you know, I, I think my interest really uh, came back to a, a family that I had a conversation with that I got to know a little bit over about a year, year and a half, um, three principals uh, who were G2 themselves, all over 60 years old, uh, a sibling group, um, thinking about how they could transition their business to the next generation and whether they should actually contemplate a sale. Um, they only had one or two, um, a first one, then a second uh, uh, next generation family members working in the business. They weren't sure if they were the right ones to sort of fully inherit the business and run it in the way they had. Granted, they hadn't had as much experience as that senior generation. Um, but one of the things that was interesting is there were so many other next gen stakeholders in that next generation and they had so many questions around whether they could participate in the family business. I, I, I was interesting to me to see some of them didn't realize there were no jobs for them in the family business. Um, as the senior generation said, it's not like we can just hand out jobs left to right here. We have to be profitable too. There has to be a need, but there was such an education gap there around, well, why do some family members get that opportunity and the rest of us don't? Um, and then for those who might be interested, could there be some other leadership opportunities for them as part of the larger sort of family enterprise? The other piece, um, Michael, was in this family, some of those shareholders who did not fully feel like they understood the business, they, want, they wanted to know how they could exit and take their shares with them. And of course, that was another opportunity to educate them about if you actually all did that, the business would collapse. So, you know, the, I, I never forget that family around how important it is. There's so much to do about trying to bridge 
that the uh, communication gap, as Pat said there. That's very helpful to frame that between the two of you. I appreciate that. So 